actually started a, a long time ago trying to manipulate physical manipulatives in the real world to show a new concept in mathematics of seeing numbers. And I want to walk over, if you'll follow me slowly, I'm going to walk over just past Val for one of the first artifacts that I created, actually still one of the most popular. This is called the right hand. It's a counting artifact. And this cube, if you zoom in on the edge, you'll actually see that there are little bitty squares in the edge of that translucent cube. And in fact, that represents one billion. I mean, you really have to zoom in. You can see that there's, there are 10 by 10 in each one of the little black things. And this big cube literally would be made of, and this would be the size, of one billion centimeter cubes. Go ahead and feel free. Walk on in. The, look right above the blue cone. And if you move your camera right to the tip of that blue cone and just zoom in on it, you'll see a one centimeter cube. Behind that, as I progress towards larger shapes, you'll see 1,000 centimeter cubes. That's 10 by 10 by 10. And then there's a seg of cubes, which represents 10,000. And then the big square that, uh, let's see if I can catch, I guess Val's right there behind it. That big square is 100,000 little cubes. And so the shapes keep going on up. Then you get a million, then you get 10 million, 100 million. And finally, that big one that we're now within is what a billion looks like. There is a little pattern that seems to emerge, is that we start with the unit cube. It seems like every thousand we end up with the shape of another cube. So everything forms a cube, everything forms a seg of cubes, and everything forms a square of cubes. The only other one exhibit that I'll have, but I'll show you that when we come back. I don't want to steal the thunder of the next one. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick little tour of the mathematics. Subitizing is the ability that it turns out we're born with. They've tested babies as young as one day old, and they do it by measuring the attention span and the dilation of the pupil. And babies have been tested, and the research has been repeated multiple times. And they can not only see the dots, but they can detect uh, behavior, moving behavior that's repetitive one, two, or three times, and they can hear the sounds one, two, or three times. And this is probably what we start with. Uh, the counter to do this is counting. Uh, everybody just reach in, grab, let's see if we can fill up the sheet. What you're doing is you're counting these cubes, but you're not counting them by numbering them. What we're doing is we're just organizing them into containers. And we still got a few more left. This is very exciting to watch you guys organize these things. In the cubed area, that large gray area to the left, we have one cubed filled, meaning that if we stuck all those little cubes that are set down in the box now, if we put them together, we would form a cube that's three by three by three. So that's 27 of them. In the next box, in a three square, we actually have one of those boxes that's filled. And it's a, it's got nine because a square, three squared is nine. So we have 27 and 9, that's 36. So we have some grouping going on, that's very common. Chunks, that's called chunking, and very good. See here, that's good. And you kind of had to do that. You either had to count or you had to chunk. And research has shown that that's true for everybody. I want you to tell me which one has 9 in it. Let's clear off these plates. But try not to count. Try not to count. There you go. Click. Which one has nine? Let's go back over to the voting board. The nine was a little harder. Do you see which, which plate has the nine in it? Here, you're looking at the quantity 
156. You have a 5 by 5 by 5 cube, which is 125. You have a 5 by 5 square, which added to the 125 gives you 150. And then you have a 5 seg, so it's 155, and then you have the 1. We write that number like this. 1, 1, 1, 1, base 5. It says we have 1 cube, 1 square, 1 seg, and 1, 1. Okay, so we're looking in here, and we see the 1, 1, 1, uh, base 5. Let's just go look at this number in base 10. So I'm going to take you over. This is the base 10 sheet. Can you now see the, if you hit the escape key, you should be with me on a base A sheet, which is base 10. And you should see that cube that's a 10 by 10 by 10 cube, the 10 by 10 square, the 10 seg, and then just the 1. So that is... That literally is the number 1,111. The number 11111 in base 10, which is 1,111. If I go to base 9, I am looking at 1111. I see the 1 cube, the 1 square, the 1 seg, and the 1 1. But it's in base 9, so it does not equal a 1,000. But what you're seeing here is a meta pattern. This is a number that doesn't show up because when we teach math, we don't teach bases. We don't use the base systems, different base systems. So we never see this pattern showing up of different numbers giving out a same physical pattern of one cube, one square, one one. So let's go ahead and look at the equation board. And I'll go ahead and open it up here. These are the different quantities needed to show these numbers. So if I put 259 little cubes into a base 6 sheet, I will get the pattern 1, 1, 1, 1. I'll get 1 cube, 1 square, 1, 1, and 1 thick. And this meta pattern, this, and we call this subquanting, this number instead of quantity, which is valid for 1,111 at the bottom one on base A. You can't say that 1111 base 9 is 1011 because it's only 820 little cubes. This is what really triggered me to have to get into Second Life. I needed to be able to visualize this. I needed to be able to let people see this for themselves because it, you, you have to see it to believe it. I'm going to change this number, and I'm just going to run down. I'm going to change my sub -quantum. I'm going to go to quantity. And we're going to look at 1,111. That's the quantity. I'll take you back to base A. We still see the 1111. So we're all seeing that. What you're doing right now is your subquanty. I'll type that word. Uh, Ucho will type that word in for you. Subquan uh, is it's Latin for sudden quantity. You're seeing the sudden quantity, uh, but they're in a different system. Look at the shapes. Think about how you're describing this. Three cubes, one square, four segs. We had to come up with that word. It's short for line segment. And then five ones. Now let's go look at what the, if we look at the uh, formula sheet, and I go down to the seven, do you see the correlation? You look in chat, look back at this. Do you see the correlation between writing this numerically as a as a expression as three seven cubes and you see that little three this is what's missing in education right now I'm doing college remediation out in Portland and we're finding out that none of our students realize that that little cube symbol meant that the shape of the object was actually a cube now let me go and show you a base six are you ready base six why don't you tell me what your subquant is be careful here. Five zero five one. Yes, that's what it is. Now, notice that they're not ordered. Every sheet that we've been looking at, they're all in order from cubes down. But notice them. Now, be careful here. See if you can write the number correctly, the subquant. Cube, you can count them. Go ahead and count them.
Yeah, they're five cubes, and they're they're each six by six by six, which is what the base is, six. Now I'm going to go to base five. Now, here we have an interesting shape. We have a seg of cubes because this number we're putting in there is really big. Move your mouse left and right, and look at the shape of these things. Get a good feel. This is where we really make a connection from the virtual world to the physical world. Again, I'm asking you to put your cursor in the middle of that black table, hold down the Alt Option key, same key, and then left click on your mouse, keep the button held down, and move your camera left and right. By moving your mouse left and right, you'll move your camera. And look around at these shapes. Pulling back or pushing forward will zoom you around. There you go. Do you see it? It's not five, Alvestra, because that's only one shape. So they're not five shapes there, there's only one. It just happens to be called, that is a seg of cubes. And the seg of cubes is a number to the fourth power. So that is five to the fourth power. There is one, five to the fourth power, three, five cubes, four, five squares, two, five segs, and then one. And notice how Without order, you were able to tell me what this was. Order of the number becomes important when you write it symbolically, and they actually indicate the shape of the number, the power of the number, the exponent of the number. So in base 5, that 1 is 5 to the 4th power. And uh, so we found that very interesting. By organizing and ordering, it makes us... It enables us to be able to see numbers much quicker. The application. Somebody might ask about the application. You don't need to read this right away. Let me explain it so you can see the order that one would go through this. Here's a little blue bat dog that was running across the yard. We put down a measuring tape and with time-lapse photography, we caught the blue bat dog at 6 seconds, 7 seconds, 8 seconds, and 9 seconds. At 7 seconds, he was at 31 feet. At 8 seconds, he was at 35 feet. And at 9 seconds, he was at 30, I mean, at 35 mil, and now he's at 39 feet. We took those quantities, 27, 31, 35, and 39, and we put them into the base sheets. And that's what's up there behind you in, in green. And I don't know how many of you can see that, that that's focused, but depending on the quality of your display and everything, you should see that there's a pattern. Can anybody tell me what that pattern is by looking at the little sheets? That's a meta pattern, 4-3. And I can even go up if we want to make this a little easier to look at. Let me go to the squid so I can put those quantities. Everybody look at the quantity. 27, 31, 35, 39. I don't want to do any fast trick on you. 4, 3. And if we look over on the board, see that we have that pattern, the 27, 31, 35, 39. Back to the prez. Did you see it in the little blue table? 27, 31, 35, 39. Back to the, to the squid and back to the board. And there you see the four sixes plus three is 27. Four sevens plus three is 31. We have this pattern. And if I extended it to base X, the unknown base, we would have an equation, 4x plus 3. We've just derived from data the equation for the speed of the blue bat dog. By organizing, I haven't taught you how to multiply, divide. I haven't taught you how to add or subtract. All I've taught you is how to organize. Yeah, assuming you didn't have it. All I've taught you is how to organize the numbers. Q is the quantity, firewoman. So the quantity of feet in this case. And I probably could have put T in there for the time. And in fact, if I go back to the Prezi, I think it does show that. Oh, it says S is in seconds. So if you look at the very bottom of the slide, it says 4 times S, the number of seconds, plus 3 equals the number of feet that it went. So let's go back up to the squid. 
Let me take away this last one. And I might clear this. Go look at this. Now, can anybody want to make the leap? Because it's in every base, notice that pattern shows up in every base. What would this pattern be in base X? And then what would the equation be? How would you describe it? Now, to do the equation correctly, you need to think about what you're describing here. What are you seeing? You're seeing two what? There are two 10 squares plus three tens plus five. You just derived a quadratic equation by looking at the data being ordered and organized. I want you to focus your camera on the granite cube, excuse me, on the ground in front of me. Focus the camera until you can see the equation that's written on that. It happens to be a fourth degree polynomial. So here's a fourth degree polynomial. And if you look up above, this is the sculpture of this polynomial. You actually can see the seg of cubes, which is that x to the fourth power and it's being represented in nine bases. Base 2, base 3, base 4, base 5, base 6, base 7, base 8, base 9, and base 10, which is base A. And so if you zoom back, you'll actually see the seg of cubes, the one cube, the one square, the one seg, and then the one one. And you're looking at the meta pattern formed by that equation. In a recap, we started out with just looking at numbers. We looked at the magnitude of numbers. We looked at how we could count with the right hand. Then we looked at how we didn't really need to count, that we could see it suddenly. And then we saw that if we used different base systems, we could subquan, which would be the equivalent of quantity in base 10, we could subquan. Then we noticed that certain number patterns created a meta pattern in the subquans, and that that meta pattern led directly to a polynomial expression or the formula. All this came about because I can visualize large quantities of cubes and you can actually see their, their shapes. And this is physically impossible to manipulate this magnitude of cubes in real life. I needed Second Life to do this work. Thanks, Val, for letting me uh, come, and thanks for the Community Virtual Library for letting me display my work here.